Hey everyone, welcome back to Alf's Mustang Garage. Uh, today we're doing more power steering work. Um, in our previous video, we removed the power steering control valve and the cylinder. And so today we're going to be rebuilding the power steering control valve. So, um, first things first, I appreciate all the support that we've had thus far in the channel. Um, I've been able to keep pumping out videos um, I'd like to keep that up uh, for you guys so what you guys can do to help support us is like comment subscribe if you haven't done that already um, it goes a long way and then I can keep uh, keeping myself in this position where I can keep doing these videos so with that being said let's jump right into this control valve here we are it's gross, it's dirty, it's been on the car for who knows how many years. So the first thing we need to do is just tear this apart. We have our new rebuild kit here that we got from National Parks Depot. So let's get this sucker torn down and get our parts in the washer. First thing we're going to do is just kind of take this little cover off. Uh, the kit does come with a new set of these, so we're probably not going to clean those up. We got a couple of little half inch bolts on here. And on this back side, we got a couple of flathead screws. So there's some old oil. Sometimes those get stuck on there pretty good. So, as you can see, you do have to take this end off first, and then you can separate that. This one's kind of jammed up pretty good. I think when we remove this thing, there's a little, a little ball pivot that pops up here that's threaded that goes to your, it goes to your pitman arm. And uh, that ball actually popped out of here and I think it kind of messed some stuff up. Okay, so this part can be a little tricky. There's a little set pin that you have to get out in order to get this piece out. So you have to kind of destroy this rubber washer here so like usually you can kind of get these to pry back just a little bit which is what you need and you have to just kind of like look through here to find that set pin So you know she'll start to see some brass as you kind of pry this out a little bit. 
Okay, so we need to just keep kind of working this out so we can see that little set pin. Some of these come out easier than others, but this one is not so easy. Okay, so I think our problem that we were fighting was uh, this uh, back socket here for the, for the ball stud was kind of stuck in there. And so I was able to get that free. And now, this should come out a little easier. Okay, we just kind of have to keep working at this and get this up high enough. So here is where the little set pin is. It's right down in here. I hope you can see it. It is hard to see on camera. But on the opposite side, I've pushed it through. And there it is right there. So that little set pin is out. Now you can thread this piece out. Okay, just so you know, um, if this sleeve, this internal sleeve, kind of gets buggered up from the removal process, it's going to be very hard to slide it out of the cylinder. So that's what I'm kind of fighting right now. And I'm just going to take a Dremel tool and just kind of smooth this out here and hopefully I can get her to slide right out for us. Okay, we're finally able to smooth that sucker out and uh, get it up past here so now that we're up past here we can get a pry bar in it and kind of work it a little more. Ours is definitely being extra difficult so hopefully yours is not this difficult. Okay, finally got that sleeve out. That was a bugger. Um, your kit comes with a new one of those. So, kit also comes with a new of this. So, most of the stuff doesn't need to be cleaned. Now we have uh, the housing that has your seals. And it's got this valve that's in there. So we have to kind of push that valve out. You can use your pick and we can pull all this out. Okay, so that plate right there comes off. And there's another seal. Okay, there's our housing completely disassembled. 
and get this stuff over in the wash. Okay, we have all of our parts in the heated ultrasonic parts washer. And let that do some work. Uh, we use a solution of water and um, super clean for that. But uh, we'll give that a few hours and maybe even let it soak overnight. And then we'll get that sucker back together. Okay, so we got everything cleaned up here. I think it uh, turned out pretty nice. Get all the grease off of there. You can see the Bendix imprint on it. So, um, everything that we're reusing is here. This is everything that's new in the kit. We do have a parts diagram to help us. Uh, we're going to soak some of this stuff in uh, Ford Motorcraft Type F transmission fluid such as this and that's kind of how we're going to begin our installation is by soaking this in some of our Motorcraft Type F fluid. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is Installing is installing the ball stud socket. Kind of get a little bit of that ATF on there. Kind of helps uh, with the installation process. And then we're going to install one of these ball stud seats. Okay. So one of those seats is just going to go in like that. And now we're going to install this. Put some of that uh, Type F fluid in there. I think my sleeve here is just a little on the tight side and maybe a little buggered over the years. So I'm going to try not to force it. I may just kind of smooth that out a little bit with my Dremel tool. Okay, so what I did off camera was just took a very fine sanding disc on my Dremel and just kind of went around this edge very carefully just to kind of make it a little more smooth and hopefully that uh, socket will slide in there a little easier and then of course I've had to re-clean this up and everything so put some more type F inside of here and let's try again Oh yeah, that went in really smooth. That went in way smooth that time. So, and now we're gonna install our ball stud here. I'm going to push this down a little bit further. Now we should be able to get that in like that. Perfect. Okay, now that the ball stud is in, you can put in your, your second stud seat. Uh, and remember the recessed area goes up top. like that. So hopefully that's a good look at how to do this part. You have balls, you have the sleeve, the ball stud, and the two seats. So okay so the next thing we're installing 
Here's our spring. And a uh, little stop plug there. So that's going to go in like this. Okay, so then the next part you're going to do is this uh, threaded piece here gets a new little rubber cushion and then your washer and then this needs to be threaded to the end of that but you gotta get that end uh, back up into place there we go so now you should be like nice and flush right there okay but before you thread this in before you thread this piece into the sleeve don't forget to install this stud here goes in like that and now you can thread this piece in and it's going to get a little tight on you so you may need to get some uh, channel locks to kind of snug this up tighten this down just kind of make sure that that uh, hole is lined up for that little roll pin so uh, once that's lined up with the notch in the sleeve you can actually turn this part because it's slotted on that end and you'll be able to see once you're looking down in there there's the slot so turn the stud make sure everything's lined up and then you can insert your roll pin like so once it's inserted you should be able to push it into place and that's good she is secure so now you won't be able to turn this stud right here that's what's keeping that stud in place okay oops we forgot this plate that goes on here with the gasket so we got to take this back off put the gasket on because obviously it doesn't go that it does not go that way so oops sometimes that's the way it is okay let's try this again and this time with the gasket I do like to put a very, very thin coat of silicone. Now we can put this back on. Okay, well now we're going to move on to our main housing here. So we have our spool with our seals and then these little bushings. So just to kind of give you a visual, because this may be very hard to see on camera, on each end of the spool, you're gonna have a seal, which goes on the ends like this. And then you get a bushing that goes on the end like that. And that goes on both of your sides like this okay so that goes in like this but it goes in your main shaft there okay so it gets a little tricky should probably get some type F on that
that uh, spool in place. It should move nice and freely. Okay, this time we're going to put the socket in here, tip it upside down. And then try pushing the spool in. Woo! There's the ticket. Okay, so yeah, 11 16 socket upside down, and then like it literally can't go anywhere. So now we gotta get the other side though. Okay, so the trick is um, you gotta keep that socket on there in place while you're working on this other side or else it's just way too easy to push that uh, bushing and socket or I'm sorry bush it bushing and seal right on out the bottom Voila. Okay, now we can assemble all the pieces that go inside here. So we have a little tiny metal washer. And we have a spring. And then we have the we have two different size uh, end caps here. We got new O-rings, new O-rings on these. So this little fat one is the one that's going to go in here, according to the diagram. So there's that. Now we're going to assemble this section here. So we go metal washer, rubber bushing, metal sleeve. Now we can connect the two pieces together. Got our new paper gasket. Just nice and snug on these bolts. Nothing crazy tight. Don't forget your little paper gasket. That comes in the kit. And we're going to do uh, this piece goes in. So you want to make sure it kind of goes in all the way okay so then we go washer spring and then the smaller retainer with a new o-ring and that's how that goes okay now for the very end of this thing here so um we have a washer Base or plate. We have a bushing, a spacer, and we have a spring, followed by another bushing, and then another washer. Kit comes with a new nylon nut, nylon locking nut. Okay. And that's how that assembly goes together there.
Now, there is a torque specification on this locking nut, and we're going to do that next. Okay, torque specifications on this is 100 inch pounds, and then we're going to back it off 90 degrees. And we're going to back it off 90 degrees. Just want to make sure that whole shaft is not turning when you do that procedure. Okay, now your end cap gets a new O ring in there. It's probably more effective to put it down on the plate there. Install your screws. Okay, my friends, you just did a Power steering control valve rebuild. Um, pretty straightforward stuff. You know, there is a paper diagram that shows all the parts exploded and how it puts back together. So, just in case you do kind of get lost track, uh, don't throw away anything until you're completely done and you know you don't need to reuse anything. So, well, we can't forget our little boot that goes on. Now can we? Nice little cute rubber boot comes with new screws. Okay, there we go. There's our nice new rubber seal on there. These are kind of a pain. You gotta squeeze them like with a vice grip or you know, like robo grips and uh, get those screws started because the screws are like really short but uh but it is doable so 